Welcome to my talk about Portman in HPC. I'm Valentin Rothberg and I work in Red Hat's Container Engines team. And Portman is a container engine for managing containers and pods. Pods are basically a concept that we inherited from Kubernetes, which allow for multiple containers to share certain resources, for instance, the network namespace, for, uh, to allow for an easier communication among these containers. Podman is compatible to Docker, so far only on the command line interface, but we are happy to expand this to the REST API with the next release. Podman's rootless support is implemented via user namespaces, and Christian asked me to focus this talk on how Podman is doing that. Open source is basically what Red Hat does, and Podman is no exception to that. It further builds upon open standards of the Open Containers Initiative and it has an open community. While most contributors and maintainers are paid by Red Hat, other companies are uh, contributing too. For instance, IBM, SUSE, Intel, Bloomberg and many open source and Linux distributions as well. What I really want to mention for you HPC folks is the high configurability of Portman not only storage op options to control and select file system drivers such as OverlayFS and their options or ButterFS, but also how Portman talks and communicates with container registries, how images are being pulled. We can specify mirrors even for single images, not only namespaces or servers, but also for images. So really down to a fine granular level, we can tweak all kinds of processes that somehow um, are part of running containers, building containers, pulling containers, basically the entire life cycle of a container. Podman does not require to run as root and it does not run as a daemon, so it's a perfect tool for the HPC context. The rootless support is implemented via user namespaces, which allow for mapping ranges of users and group IDs. This means that we can run containers as different users. For instance, we can run a container as root inside without being root outside the container. This is great from multiple perspectives. First, if we are root inside the container, we uh, achieve a high degree of portability because many, many tools and programs unfortunately really want to run as UID zero. For instance, many package managers want that or uh, commonly web servers and things like that. But we can run this container as uh, a non-root user outside the container, which has a great security um, uh, impact. It really is more secure. Why? Because in the worst case scenario, if a container manages to break out and access resources on the host, it really cannot do as much harm because we run as an ordinary user. It basically running or using user namespaces allows for running as any user inside the specified mapping. So how does this mapping of UID and GIDs work? Um, Portman uses two tools, the new UID map and new GID map, which um, are reading two files, etc sub GID and UID respectively, which specify which IDs ordinary users can use to set up the mapping of user IDs and group IDs into a user namespace. However, note that we can we are not forced to use this way of mapping, but we can also just use a single ID. Uh, so there's really a lot of flexibility. But let's go back to etc sub UID and look how this file looks like. So we see three fields in the file. The first one is the host user. The second one is the starting ID of host UIDs. And the second one is basically the size of the mapping, basically the number of available ideas, uh, IDs. In a more human-friendly way, this means that user Valentin can use 65K of IDs starting at ID 1000 inside a user namespace created by user Valentin. Let's have a closer look. What does this mean when we run a container? So 
with this file, with Valentin colon 100k colon 65k, we run as a rootless user a Fedora container and look at the UID map, where we see two lines and three fields each where the first field means or basically indicates the start ID in the container, the second one is the start ID on the host of the mapping, and the third one is the range of the length. So this means when we look at the first line that UID 0 inside the container is running as UID 1000 in, uh, outside of the container, basically in or on the host. So let's look a little bit closer. Let's first run, an, as an ordinary user, a Fedora container, which does nothing more than sleep until infinity. Then we execute id u in the container. And indeed, it, it, it basically tells us it's running as uid0. Then when we look at Podman top and query for the host user and the user, Again, we see the expected result. The host user is UID 1000. The user inside the container runs as zero, as root. And just to be extra sure on the host, indeed, ID-U, we are running as UID 1000. Here, I made a screenshot of an upstream issue against Shadow Utils that Dan, Dan Walsh opened. And he started a conversation that brings the, the the mapping and the way you, basically these user namespace mappings are set up to the next level. We really care about our enterprise users and customers and the mapping so far is pretty pretty static. Everything is host based, right? These paths uh, relate to uh, each and every user on each and every host and it's really a nightmare if you're an administrator where you need to uh, manage dozens or hundreds or even thousands of nodes you really don't want to configure each and every node manually or via handcrafted scripts ideally we want such uh, uid maps the information to be handled via ldap or free ipa for instance um, and the conversation so far is going really well, but you can imagine that this is a very cross-cutting and very um, Im impactful feature. So the open source community tries to find the best solution. We're working with them closely together and we are optimistic and positive to have a solution by 2021. As I mentioned before, uh, Podman does not force or strictly force um, to use such a UID mapping. It f also allows to just map a single ID from the host into the container, which is a very common requirement in HPC environments where users, ordinary users, do not have, have set UID and set GID capabilities. So using user ns equals keep dash id, when using it, the um, podman will map the current uid and gid of the user into the user namespace of the container. A problem we face when only having one uid is that um, many container images use more than one uid and gid. So there we run into problems when we try to join the files when uh, creating or pulling an image or creating a container. We, can, we have a solution for it in the storage configuration file where we can opt in via the ignore join errors option to have a solution for the aforementioned problem. Basically, when setting ignore join errors to true, we allow a non-privileged user to run uh, as a single UID within the namespaces of the container. This way the user can pull and use any image even when the image has multiple UIDs. Somehow a natural consequence of having only one UID available is that if we um, encounter any other UID this one will be squashed down to the fault UID in the container so we lose the UID separation of the container or in the container image. I started the, the talk somehow uh, teasing on the new REST API, which is compatible to Docker, and I want to close the talk with this too. Um, I'm 
very very excited about the upcoming release of Podman version 2 which is currently in release candidate 3 we come with a new REST API, it's Docker compatible and offers um, features and endpoints beyond that to support um, Podman specific features and commands we introduce a new configuration file, the containers conf it ships with tons of improvements for instance for Podman generate system D which allows for generating custom System D unit files to run containerized services via System D. It also ships with new remote clients for Linux, macOS, and Windows. If you have questions or want to join the community, you find us on Freenode in the Podman channel. You can also subscribe to the Podman mailing lists on lists.podman.io. And if you want to check it out, Podman is available on all major Linux distributions. Fedora, CentOS, RHEL, OpenSUSE, Slash, Debian, Ubuntu, Arch Linux, Gentoo, and more. Thanks for listening in.